Welcome to the Bladed Tech Channel's 89th installment of our Milestones Anthology on the history of technology and space exploration, and our eighth segment on the SpaceX Starship Interplanetary Spacecraft Program, and more specifically, the serial number 15 suborbital flight in the new spacecraft's full main stage configuration. On May 5, 2021, the Starship serial number 15 spacecraft was launched about 6 to 7 miles, or 10 kilometers in altitude matching the highest launch to date for the prototype interplanetary vehicle. The serial number 8 through serial number 11 prototypes were launched to the same height between December 9th, 2020 and March 30th, 2021. The serial number 15 launch is the next action in a series of tests on the Starship design, with several previous static prototypes during ground tests and four full-size craft during flight being destroyed in a learning process of trial and error. The launch comes on the heels of the blockbuster announcement by NASA that the agency had selected SpaceX on April 16th as the sole company to win a contract to develop and demonstrate a crewed lunar lander. The award was for option A of the Human Landing System Program, which covers development of a crewed lunar lander in an unmanned demonstration mission. The fixed price milestone-based contract has a total value of $2.89 billion. SpaceX was one of three companies that received initial HLS contracts nearly one year ago for early design work on their lander concepts. SpaceX bid a variant of Starship and the Super Heavy Booster that would be refueled by a Starship freighter in low Earth orbit before going to the moon. NASA originally wanted to make more than one award for Option A. However, Congress only authorized $850 million for the HLS program in fiscal year 2021, about one-fourth of its original request. The agency said that SpaceX's price was lower than the other two teams, led by Blue Origin and Dynetics and was lower, quote, by a wide margin. SpaceX also received a technical rating of acceptable and a management rating of outstanding, which was better than the other two companies. Both Blue Origin and Dynetics have appealed the NASA award to SpaceX. After the crew demonstration mission as early as 2024, NASA will procure landing services through a separate contract. That future contract will be a full and open competition, allowing the other HLS competitors and perhaps other companies to compete with SpaceX. The implication is that the Artemis program would be that competition. In fact, Artemis proponents in Congress were critical of NASA's award to SpaceX, pointing out that the award came before the arrival of a new permanent NASA administrator and deputy administrator, and that SpaceX would own the vehicles and intellectual property, not the agency. The Biden administration has made statements downplaying manned space exploration in favor of orbital missions dedicated to climate science. However, any launch to the moon is a way off as SpaceX is busily currently testing its avionic engine and ignition designs. Serial number 15 incorporated a number of improvements over serial number 11 that are intended to address the landing failures while continuing to refine the inversion and glide controls. The prototype was configured to use three Raptor engines to launch the 130-ton rocket. Let's watch the serial number 15 flight in real time. B plus 30 seconds, Starship 15 is airborne as we get a view of the three Raptor engines as we're powering our way to 10 kilometers altitude in today's test flight. Just past one minute into flight, we're through two kilometers altitude. All three Raptor engines continuing to burn. Next major event in about one minute is we will turn off the first of the three Raptor engines.
coming up at T plus two minutes, uh, we appear to have uh, frozen the view from the engine cameras. However, the Raptor engine's continuing to perform, and we've got shutdown on engine three on time. T plus two minutes, 40 seconds. While we're trying to regain video from the vehicle, we continue to ascend. We have just passed the eight kilometer point in flight. Everything continues to look good on Starship 15. Coming up on three and a half minutes into flight, we're approaching the 10 kilometer altitude. We'll begin to hover here. We've had engine number two shut down on time. We'll now be moving into the hover with one engine. And then in a little bit, we will begin the flip over to horizontal position and begin our descent. Or hopefully a ground camera will be able to bring us live views of the flight. Just past T plus four minutes into flight. We've got the views back from the Raptor engines. We get T plus four minutes, 34 seconds. While we're working to regain video, it looks like we've got a shot looking back at the flaps on Starship. We're in the horizontal defense, descent phase now. We're passing six kilometers. Now, a reminder, phase that's coming up as we get ready for landing, we will light three Raptor engines, flip the vehicle from horizontal to vertical. If things look good, we will shut down one Raptor engine and then possibly a second one and land on a single engine in the landing zone. Five minutes into flight, Raptor continuing to descend. We're coming up on three kilometers altitude. have ignition. Starship heading back to the lander zone. And Starbase Flight Control has confirmed, as you can see on the live video, we are down. The Starship has landed. We're going through the safing sequence in the flight computer right now. We'll be back in a moment. Well, if you've just joined us, you missed a great flight. Right now, we have successfully landed in the landing zone right on the concrete. You can see we do have a small fire at the base of the vehicle. Not unusual with the methane fuel that we're carrying as we continue to work on the test vehicle design. You may be able to see uh, water going on the pad from the water cannons. But again, Starship 15 powered by three Raptor engines. We have successfully launched it from our facility in South Texas. Landed after a routine flight where we shut engines down on the way to 10 kilometers executed the horizontal unpowered descent and then we got some great views of the engines lighting up as we came down for a landing at a nice slow velocity onto the concrete landing pad. The past two weeks have been full of accomplishments by the SpaceX team. We've had the incredible launch of the Crew 2 astronauts on the Crew Dragon Resilience. We've had the first nighttime landing and recovery of the four astronauts on Crew Dragon Endeavor's flight last Saturday night and two successful flights of Falcon 9 in the past seven days, each carrying 60 Starlink satellites successfully into orbit. And now the SpaceX Texas team has flown a test flight of Starship with a landing back in the landing zone here in Starbase, Texas. Also like to remember, this is the 60th anniversary of the first American in space, astronaut Alan Shepard and his Mercury capsule, and SpaceX has landed Starship successfully on this date. Again, an outstanding period as we work to enable the future of human spaceflight and expansion into the solar system. And with that, we're going to conclude today's webcast with the views here of Starship 15. Thank you for joining us here at SpaceX, and have a good day.
At 4 minutes and 20 seconds from launch, sail number 15 throttled down and then shut off the last remaining lit engine, reorienting the craft for its return glide. At T plus 5 minutes and 30 seconds, all three engines were then reignited to reorient the craft in preparation for landing. SpaceX said that serial number 15 may land on one or two engines, but it would not be all three, and during the actual landing only one was shut off, leaving two ignited. The actual landing appeared to be as designed, and the craft alighted on the return pad without a hard bounce. There was a fire at the base of the vehicle after landing, similar to what had happened with the flight of Starship serial number 10. That craft exploded less than 10 minutes later. On this flight, remotely operated fire suppression systems appeared to extinguish the fire within several minutes. Musk said afterwards, quote, Starship landing nominal. There was no detailed follow-up. It's not clear if serial number 15, since it survived the landing, will be reused or if serial number 16 will be trundled out next on the launch manifest. SpaceX said that the operational version of Starship will be capable of carrying up to 100 people at a time on lunar or interplanetary missions. The company has undoubtedly been designing the interior of that craft, but has not yet released details to the public. The 165-foot tall Starship will be launched from Earth atop a first-stage booster called the Super Heavy, which will be powered by two and a half dozen Raptors of its own. The Starship vehicle will be powerful enough to blast itself off the Moon and Mars, whose gravitational poles are much weaker than that of our planet. Both Starship and the forthcoming Super Heavy are designed to be fully and rapidly reusable, a technological breakthrough that SpaceX believes will make ambitious exploration feats, such as a Mars colonization, economically feasible. The hulls are expected to be designed for 20 to 30 years of use, like a conventional aircraft. The company hopes to field up to three Starship flights per day, or around 1,000 flights a year. The company has boldly predicted that its craft will continuously ferry people the 180 million miles to Mars, placing 1,000 human inhabitants on the Red Planet by 2030, and about a million by 2050. SpaceX hopes Starship will reach low Earth orbit this year and have people inside by the end of 2022. This would hopefully be followed up by a cargo mission to Mars in that same year, return NASA astronauts to the lunar surface in 2024, and even begin sending people to Mars by 2026. SpaceX has already booked one Starship customer, Japanese billionaire Yusaku Mezawa, who will fly around the moon on the vehicle with several other hand-picked passengers. The target launch date for that mission is 2023, with the crew roster being settled by the end of 2021. In the meantime, work continues unabated on the Starship development program, both on the Starships themselves and the Super Heavy booster. The first Super Heavy hull, BN-1, was a fabrication and assembly process demonstrator that was scrapped after construction. BN-2 is currently under construction at SpaceX's Boca Chica site and is to be fitted with sufficient engines to make the space frame orbit capable. That booster is expected to be transported to the orbital launch pad that is under construction at the site. There is some speculation by some outlets that the upcoming BN-3 prototype may fly with the serial number 20 Starship prototype currently under construction as part of the first Starship orbital flight test. What do you think about SpaceX's Starship commercial interplanetary spacecraft development program? Do you think that SpaceX's first successful landing of a prototype is a positive indication that there will be a moon flight by 2024? Share with us by dropping a comment below. We hope you enjoyed this 89th installment of the Latest Tech's Milestone series. If so, click that like button. We hope you have been enjoying our content. Have we earned your subscription to our channel? If yes, and you have not yet taken the opportunity to subscribe, please take a moment to do so now and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss upcoming videos. We want to continue delivering great content to you. You can always unsubscribe and subscribing is free. Links to some of our most recent episodes can be found in the description section below. You can peruse our entire 200 plus video library by looking at our playlists, which conveniently sort videos by subject. We announce all new videos on our micro blogging accounts, which are listed below, as well as in the community feed for this channel. Want to know how to navigate our channel content? We refer to RetroTech and Innovation Documentary segments as episodes. Coverage of current events in space exploration, science and technology are labeled as shorts. Space and tech history are documented in an anthology called Milestones. And gameplay recordings can be discovered on the Bladed Tech Gaming Channel in videos called Walkthroughs and Side Missions. Stay connected by occasionally checking our Instagram feed, where we post content from our upcoming episodes and from episodes past that you may have missed. And finally, 
Join us on our Facebook and Minds pages, where we cover current news and events related to channel content. Thanks for watching.